Good afternoon, everyone. For me, it's a great pleasure that I've been invited here to be able to talk a bit about our experiences. First of all, I'd like to thank God and Mother Earth and nature, all our spiritual beings who have accompanied and guided us. It's also a great pleasure to see for the first time these lands. When I think about these earths, I think, was it good or bad? But someone in our world had to discover our America and Colombia. My name is Juan Bautista Agrida. I'm from the Camcha community in Colombia, in the department of Putumayo in Sibundoy. Since I was a child, I've worked as an, an apprentice, and at 20 years, I started practicing traditional medicine. Today, I'm governor of, of my Kamcha community. I'm 46 years old. And the life, life gives us an opportunity to, to know worlds, people, experiences to, that we can share. I'm the son of my father, Martin Agrida, who left this world two years ago, but leaves this inheritance to us, a very satisfying inheritance for the modern world. When I was a child, my father began to tell us about this mystery curing, healing. Sometimes when you're a child, you don't understand the things people tell you or do to you. I remember very well him um, doing preparations for rituals with us, with animal bones and stones that he had for curing, for healing. And every full moon, he did rituals with us, me and my, me and my brother. We never really paid a lot of attention to this. But after we were, after eight years, he began to prepare us in a, in a different way. Because where I live, there is not yaje or ayahuasca. We've always been seen as the, the drunkard community. Maybe, maybe they give other names. But there was a lot of variety in our valley, and, and there was just one, one variety that we took, that we drank. And this was when there wasn't so much yaje. Uh, there was a lot of marketing of food and other things towards other other indigenous territories. And that was how my dad discovered yaje. And, and through yaje, we began we began to work more deeply. So the experience we had, I would like to share it with you. The, the yaje that we have is a, is a medicine which is totally, totally holy. We live in a very different culture. 
Well, the experiences that I've had in the rituals, many people uh, arrive in search of an, another hallucinogenic experience, which is completely wrong. We've never used it to have hallucinations, which they don't, don't, don't help. And certainly not if uh, you're blocked. And it's very interesting when they ask when they, what they're going to take, if there's a bit of knowledge, if yaje is addictive. If it was addictive, in the 46 years that I've been taking it, maybe I would be a bit madder than I am. It's a medicine that it helps you. If you're in different worlds, it helps you to be on, the, on Earth. It doesn't make you go mad. That's why when I started working with my father, I was always had it very present that yaje is two things only. Yaje y Chacupan. That we stir up so many things. And hearing that for me, uh, the way I've seen things, and I've experienced things, it gives me, a, I feel it's a real pity. Because that's ending the essence of our medicine. The essence of the work that, that our grandfathers, our ancestors have done. That for thousands of years, they discovered thousands of years ago. There, there might be lots of scientists making lots of studies, but the scientists didn't discover ayahuasca. That was done by our ancestors. There's lots of myths and legends, but no one really knows how indigenous people began to use this in all of the Amazon. So medicine has quickly expanded it, spread it throughout the world. But if we use it properly to heal. Medicine is 100% good. Used before what we say the beginning. The Spanish began to discover us and everything which is in our world. The Spanish discovered us and everything which is in our world before using the chemicals to change the form of our medicinal plants. We have always been consuming them in a natural way. My father died at age 93, and lots of grandparents went beyond 100 years. Today, today people are probably not going to live beyond 100 years. Yaje is a very mysterious rem remedy because I remember very well that I began to take it uh, up to 18 years and I didn't have visions. They always, they always said you have to take it to learn Yaje is a guide. But because I took so much, I said, this is a lie. This is not true. Because I heard people who'd taken it and saw their ancestors, they saw their problems, everything that happened to him, but nothing happened to me. So I said, this just is ridiculous. This is a lie. Until one day, another Taita came and he sold my father with Yahé. So one day another Taita brought Yahé 
and he sold it to my, my dad, my father. And to know that this, this medicine, you have to try it. And so I tried it again. And in five minutes, I already was feeling the effect. And at the same time, I went to vomit. And when I began to vomit in the house where I lived, there wasn't, it was just a, just a path. And in, in, the, in the courtyard, I saw uh, cartwheel prints. I thought they were car tires, but when I looked again, they weren't tires. It was just the, the rubbish that had transformed. And suddenly this rubbish uh, got turned into snakes. And they began to grow and grow. And then they came towards me. So I got frightened. I opened the door and, uh, and opened the door. And there were the older people. <laughs> the adults, uh, and I got really frightened. I told my dad that I didn't want to have this anymore. And he said, son, there's no other way of doing it, because what the taite brought was a yaje, quite light yaje. So that was my experience. And the, the other one I want to talk about is a, is a longer story, because it's six hours of fighting against snakes. <laughs> And the analysis of this for me was that I never wanted to know anything else about Yahé. But in life, I had a very uh, nice experience which helped me with uh, art, through art. I began to draw. I drew this experience on a piece of cardboard and someone brought it from me. And I, I never would have imagined the price they were going to pay for that and they gave me uh, a painting kit and when I arrived at home with that to, to start painting again I had to take Yahé again <laughs> and that's how I began again after two years two years after the experience I took it again and that's when I really started to understand the mystery of this medicine and the vision. When you feel, really feel the vision, when you take it personally, it guides you to be able to have this mystery uh, of healing. And when you're with patients, looking at what medication you're going to prescribe, because in our communities, lots of patients arrive from all over the place. But we don't always take yaché. There are lots of medicinal plants that can heal. It's not necessarily <coughs> that we always give yaché to heal, to cure. So, in accordance with that, Yahé, yes, it gives a lot of light. light. And in this world, there is good Yahé and bad Yahé. There is a class of Yahé which is bad for doing sorcery, witchery, or whatever. You don't need to concentrate it much. To make the plant, it's easy. The problem is solving the problem, uh, getting rid of it, fixing it. Hopefully, with these experiences, we can look at the world of medicine. Because for some, it's medicine, and for others, it's drugs. Four years ago, I began I began to go to the United States to share medicine. <clears throat> and in one of those trips, they put me in prison for, for the medicine. And in prison, there were, there were a lot of shepherds, and I told them, Eso es malo, eso de la 
they, they were clerics and they said that Yahweh is bad, that's why God brought you here to punish you. And I made lots of friends there in, in prison. And when I began to heal, because there was nothing there for healing, just water. So I had to heal with my hands. And the person who was speaking worse about me, he was really had a lot of pain in his waist, in his back. And he was saying that he was suffering a lot in his back and drugs weren't having an effect. And I said, well, if you want, I could help you. And because it hurt him so much, he said, okay. So I looked and he had like a desk configuration around the hips of the bones. So I, so I fixed the bones and the next day he was healed, cured. And I asked him, was that something from the, from, of the devil or something natural? There's no more things about the devil. In fact, he said, uh, we'll pray that you, that you get out of here. Um, I made some really good friends who said, uh, don't go, we don't want you to leave here. So I'll use this opportunity um, to share a little. And when you have the opportunity to go to my country and really uh, understand the medicine, you're welcome. Wherever you are, we are, we are there identifying ourselves and hoping that one day we can manage our own medicine and that we, ha we are very clear about what is medicine. In immigration now, when I came, they said, they said, what's this all about? And I said, I'm going to a conference. But what kind of conference? On indigenous medicine, I said. But really? Are you, are you telling me this? Because it's the first time I've heard this. Because lots don't know of it, but when we, when we know of it, it's, uh, let, let us know it so that we know truly what our medicine is uh, and welcome to our world. Thank you very much. Thanks, Taita Juan. Uh, the next to speak is Cajuyali, also from Colombia. He's been working for 35 years as a, as a healer. And if I understand right, it was Juan's father who initiated him. Thank you very much. It's really an, an honor to be on a panel with these masters. of this uh, ancestral tradition of this sacred plant. Out of coincidence, someone who was coming from Ecuador and couldn't arrive, who was a representative of Ecuador, and he very kindly, well, Isis very kindly has have asked me to share a few words with you today. It's really an honor and I feel it's very special to be able to be here um, and share a few words. I'm a descendant of a native village that's now disappeared from Colombia. That was in the central region next to, next to the Magdalena River, the, the Rio Grande that crosses Colombia from the, from the south to the Atlantic Ocean. This was the river where my ancestors lived in the Panchi ethnic minority. And I felt like an orphan from uh, 
the, from these uh, holy traditions. And I had the opportunity to go to the Amazon, the region of the Amazon, to be chosen by a great master, a great elder, Moinani, that, that lived near Leticia, who was called in his native language and in Spanish, Jose Garcia. After being 12 years with this elder, and understanding, receiving his tradition about the uh, sacred plants, the important ones like the coca, the tobacco, and in a special ceremony with tobacco, in which my elder, Tsiulateki, asked this plant, where would it correspond to me to receive uh, apprenticeship for ayahuasca? A very special ceremony in which both masters, uh, we drank a lot of tobacco, a high concentration of tobacco. And Jose Garcia had this vision that I had to go to the Sibundoy to meet the, my dear father of, of my spiritual brother, Juan Baptista, uh, my dear Taita Martín Agrida. Under very special conditions, I had this, because of the vision that this elder had in the Amazon, I had to go to Sibundoy to find an elder from that community who, when I arrived at this place, he would greet me saying, I've been waiting for you. And there's no more information. And in Sibundoy, it's, it's very well known throughout the world for having a lot of taitas in, in this tradition, in the ayahuasca tradition. And when I arrived in Sabondoy, I headed for the square of Taita Martín Agridor, who at that moment was out, outside of of his house, and when he saw me, he said, welcome, I've been waiting for you. And that was the sign that the elder in the Amazonas had given me, and we began a relationship which was so beautiful, with so much uh, affection, and with so much virtue with your father. Juan ba the father of Juan Bautista, who had uh, the noblest and most beautiful heart from this that has existed in, in, on our Mother Earth. For many years, I was receiving the teachings of Taita Martin Agrida, and after loyally, faithfully following his teachings and his uh, instruction, he carried out a very special ceremony to consecrate me in the tradition and authorize me to carry out this work that I've been doing ever since. I live 50 kilometers from uh, Juan's community in the region of Nariño, which is close to the capital of uh, the capital of this department called Pasto. But we have a small community. We've built a maloca following the tradition of the native uh, peoples of the Amazonas. Carrying this out with, with my family, um, these noble teachings, because as Juan said, and as I've always said, and I'm still saying the elders, this is a a millenarium sacred tradition. It's very, very important that we, that it continues uh, to be carried out just as it was when our ancestral beings, our sacred ancestral beings did it, and not in any other way, because it has such a beautiful virtue of benefits 
of curing, of healing, of teaching to live in harmony with our Mother Earth. If it's not used properly, it could be uh, totally the opposite. Thank you. Thank you also for uh, finishing so early. And that gives us a bit more time for the, the next to speak, who is, um, is Sian Kashinawa from the state of Acre in Brazil, where I was lucky enough to meet him very quickly in, in the past, in the city. And, and Bia is going to translate for us from Portuguese to Spanish. But since we've got a bit more time on our hands, uh, the other speakers spoke a bit earlier than expected. The talk can be a bit more complete. We, I think there's en enough time to be uh, relaxed about this. And Eu quero agradecer a organização que nos trouxe do Brasil até aqui, né? Para que Visa, Espanha, encontrar muita gente variada, né? Cientista de todas as qualidades. E agradecer os parentes também de Colômbia. Estamos aqui nós dois. Eu, meu Ivo aqui apresentando com a amiga Bia, que vai traduzir a gente. I'd like to thank everyone, especially the organizers of ICES. For us, it's a, it's a real pleasure to be here, to come here from Brazil. So I extend a greeting, a, a, an especially affectionate greeting to all our relatives that are here, and especially to his son, uh, Lumpa. Thanks for this meeting, this reunion, which has a very special meaning for the, our, these, all these spiritual, traditional spiritual communities. I'm a leader of, of my village. I'll introduce myself. We live in the municipal of Jordan. Which is in the region of Rio Branco, de Acre, on the border of Peru and Brazil. We are currently 12,000 Uniquin indigenous peoples and we are continuing our struggle for our survival. We've come here to speak a little bit about our history, about our tradition. And to give some sort of continuity to all of our memories and, our, and traditions of our ancestors. Extremamente importante para trazer um recado, a notícia ou a continuidade de cada história de cada povo. This meeting is very important for everything which is connected with giving continuity, uh, transmitting a message about the history of our peoples. Então, o componente aqui pela manhã foi muito importante as pessoas antigas, né, de, de conhecedor de medicina. It's very important, the presence of various people who are connoisseurs of the ancient uh, traditions of this medicine from all over the world. And I saw someone mentioning that this history has been, all, been going for 8,000 years. Yeah, 
But we, the Uni Queen, have been drinking this, this drink for 450,000 years. This drink that now has lots of names, Daimi, Vegetal, and, and other names. We've known this for a long time. So this meeting is about defining our rights and to tell the stories properly. So for us, it's a medicine of, from the jungle. In all these years, we've seen many crusades, and there is everything, there's the good, the bad, the correct, the not correct, and we're here to tell our story and to give a bit of continuity to these traditions from the rainforest. So here, in, in front of us, not just people from this panel, but from all of you, all of these people listening now, so here in front of you is our, it is our job, our message from the Uni Queen, the peoples from the rainforest, that we consider all this very seriously with a lot of responsibility, a lot of respect, a lot of, we're very serious. And we, as researchers and students, apprentices, we're looking to, to give continuity to this memory. So this medicine guides us, and more important than many things that we think are important, this medicine, in fact, is something which leads us and allows us to go on the right path. Because our fathers and mothers, universities, teach us a lot, but we continue to make lots of mistakes. The medicine doesn't resolve everything, it's not the solution to everything, but it does teach, it does show the path, the, the path to do things the way we meant to do them. It helps us to feed ourselves properly, to cure our spirit, to heal our spirit, how we can relate what, with each other. So it's true that we learn a lot from our families, a lot in university, but we have to do more than that to continue into the future, for the future generations and what we have in front of us. So the story of the survival of the indigenous peoples in Brazil is so heavy and hard and complicated 
that even today we don't really know what's happened and what's going to happen. So, in fact, I'm very happy to see that we're not just the indigenous peoples who are here, but lots of people, st uh, students, anthropologists, researchers, and others who are interested in this very complicated uh, subject of the indigenous peoples for it to continue. So I thank all of you people here. Também importância de de que a nossa medicina da floresta não é mais simples só o cipó ou a folha rainha ou simplesmente algumas plantas. Agora nós queremos também valorizar e dar continuidade e o respeito sobre o uso desses nossa medicina porque só usamos como um acervo histórico até agora. So, another thing that I, makes me happy is to realize that it's not just about the, um, the leaf of Bejoco, or the uh, Rainha leaf, as he says, which is, which is a Portuguese name for, um, for the Chacruna. But it's not just the Bejoca and the, and the leaf, it's various medicines. So it, it is in general the indigenous medicine. It's not just our medicine of uh, the tribes of the rainforest. So we'd like to value all of these dimensions, the, the cultural dimension, the social dimension, the economic dimension, because we need all of this to give continuity to our lives and to our history. From our traditional way, we have experienced lots of very hard experiences, a very heavy process, we've been massacred, there's been a lack of education, no rights or little rights, and lots of challenges. So my hope, uh, and this is a message I've brought, is that you help us to awaken a little more um, to the suffering and the need for more rights in the social sphere, in the collective sphere, but not just for indigenous tribes, but in all humanity. Because there are many countries and many peoples that are repressed today. There's a lot of suffering in the world. As peoples from the rainforest, we've been a long time caring for the water, for the land, uh, for the rainforest, and it's important to continue to respect and care for all of this. E nesses cuidados que a gente fica cuidando, a sociedade né, brasileira tem crítica entre nós, que os povos indígenas não temos esse conhecimento. Mas, por outro lado, temos um conhecimento muito profundo, né, como todos os parentes aqui entre Amazônico, né, que Bolívia, Equador, Colômbia, Brasil, Peru, Venezuela, aí vai mais. Né? Isso tentaram preservar sempre... 
So, we indigenous peoples are very criticized in the Brazilian society. They criticize, but they don't know us. But actually, we know, we understand, we have our traditions and we have our knowledge. Not just us, but lots of our relatives, uh, of our brothers in other tribes, in the Amazon, in other countries, Brazil, Peru, Colombia, Ecuador. Queremos valorizar igual igualdade, né, com dignidade dentro do mundo que a gente vivemos, dentro de um país que a gente pode trazer mais conhecimento. Com esse encontro a gente pode trazer, chamar atenção para que nós seguimos na igualdade, usando tudo o que nós temos, porque medicina, como eu disse, tem valor espiritual, valor tradicional, valor social e valor econômico também, porque não podemos diminuir essa nossa coisa importante no meio da tanta coisa ruim e eu considero a medicina um dos caminhos alternativos para toda a população do mundo. So we have to evaluate the equality, uh, a more dignified life for all of us in our world, in all the world that we live in. We all need more knowledge. An event like this, a meeting like this that we have here, it's really important to draw attention from the world to this traditional medicine, to this path, which is a spiritual path, to a traditional path. It's a social path and it's an economic path because the economy, the economy sh shouldn't be uh, underrated. I think this medicine is important not just for the indigenous peoples but for the whole world. This medicine can show us an alternative way. que além de a gente cuidar dessas coisas espirituais, coisa boa, o país, né, está um, tá um tempo de guerra, muita coisa contrário, além de a gente gastar o recurso gastando pela pela guerra e, e trazer mais educação, apoiar mais a pesquisa, apoiar desenvolvimento importante para dar continuidade para o futuro geração que vai vir, eu acho que é uma questão mais importante de voltar para nossa casa com essa cabeça erguida para nossa floresta. So I would like to thank you all sincerely to all of you friends, to all these important people who are listening to us and this conference. In this conference, we're going to speak with these people. We're living in a world which is full of wars. We're living in times of war where a lot of resources are being invested in war. But now it's time to invest resources in education, in research, and in development. That's really important for the future, for future generations. So I appeal to you to, to hold your heads up high and think about all of this. Realizar né, esses estudos importantes para que no futuramente vai ser um caminho importante junto com a medicina ou outro tipo de atividade que a gente pode descobrir daqui para frente. Né, por até hoje é o que, nós, o que nos calma né, com essa nossa floresta que é, é folha entre o cipó que não é nada que a gente vê, mas ao mesmo tempo é uma geração importante de transformação com um encanto, né? como outros expositores já colocaram, no encanto, encanto importante com toda a natureza, tanto serpente, né? como onça, como uma pinguari, como samaúma, como um baleia, como própria terra, né? própria floresta, então tudo são encantos. A gente pisa por cima, a gente vive, a gente não sente, mas quando a gente está contactado com medicina, a gente sabe respeitar um outro, como um prosseguir. Né? So, I would like to ask you, to all of you researchers, especially all of those at university, 
in important universities who have resources. So look at this important subject of the medicine, because we need more research into these medicines. And the truth is, it's not just about medicine, because it, it could open lots of other possibilities to study and research and to understand more about these traditions and, and these paths. We have the leaf and we have the buco, but we have lots of other plants. And when someone enters into this, the world of these medicines and takes it and feels it and is capable, is capable of seeing the snakes, the jaguars, the plants, the sanomas, which is a, a tree, the earth, all the rainforest, then, then you can feel that all of this is alive, that we are treading on all of this. But all of this that we're treading on is alive. So, uh, what is a human life? It's, um, 60, 70, 80 years? It's, it's very short. But we only live that amount, that number of years, and then we think we know everything. But actually, we don't. We're just passing. We're just passing for a, a short time. And actually, we're indebted. Indebted to, to our mother and our father, the earth. We're here in the present, and it's our obligation to give continuity to the future, to what comes afterwards. We have time. We are in modern times, but it's important to look at the ancestral world, the rainforest world, the enchanted world, and teach these things, this knowledge, these teachings to our children, to our grandchildren, to give continuity for future generations. That is what the future is going to be. So, 1,500 years have passed without writing anything. So now we, we are guided by, because we're guided by stories, by an oral tradition. Father to son, father to son, from one generation to another, that's how our stories have passed, through our songs, through our stories, to other generations. Everything which is connected with this world, which I'm telling you, which is a world of dreams, of visions, of uh, spirits, 
the world of the rainforest. But now we're in a modern world. So despite, although this society has treated us badly and has done so much damage to us and has tried to disable us, we are still alive and we're still doing our things. And despite the, the weaknesses, here we are today, very happy and very honoured to present this book, which is a result of research about something which is very sacred, very deep, connected with our secrets, our knowledge, and it's a, it's, it has at least 365 different species, uh, 365 species, different kinds of medicines. In this book it just speaks about 105, but we're planning more books, the second launch and a third launch. So when we come to speak to you to a meeting like this, we are going to come, we're not going to come with empty hands and just speaking, but we're going to present our book and we're going to give one to the uh, the management of this event so that you can learn about our work. So we're here in this present, but looking towards the future. And we're very happy to see so much research, hundreds, 100, 200, 300 uh, research projects which are being started now, which have begun in Brazil from the birth. He didn't use that word, but he's talking about the Brazilian church, the San Dodami. He mentions uh, Mestre Raimundo Ireneo Serra, who, has, who created the first church, the Daimi church, in Rio Branca, Acre, Brazil, which are spiritual churches that use ayahuasca. And then this was continued with the church of, the church of Padrino Sebastián and his son Alfredo, who since the 1990s, they, all of us, have, have accompanied the birth of these churches. These churches that are now not just in Nagri, but in all Brazil. And they've left Brazil as well, like countries like um, in Spain, for example. And it's a very interesting movement. And it's generated a lot of research and it's being very interested. He's very interested in research. He wants to support research. And he wants everyone who's involved in this to carry on with their research, to carry on uh, passing the knowledge to the future. So here in these countries in Europe, they have some visions that they think 
that the medicine from the rainforest can't be used because uh, uh, of the laws that exist. They think that ayahuasca has this DMT and that will damage us and it's going to leave us crazy. And then it's just all complicated. This makes it very difficult for our knowledge to arrive, our traditional knowledge to arrive in Europe. So again, I tell you that us, the people of the jungle, want to tell the authorities here very clearly, the authorities in the whole world and in Europe, that you're complicating things here, and it doesn't need to be like that. This medicine is very important, and it's not about uh, banning it or saying that it's going to drive you crazy and it doesn't work. No, that's not true. This is very important medicine, very important for us, very important for the tribes of the jungle, and very important for people throughout the world. This medicine has the right to go to other countries. The authorities have to understand that this medicine is a cure it's for lots of things in the world. It's a cure for the self, it's a cure for our health, it's a cure for our spirit, it's a cure for our families, for our wisdom and for our children. So it's very important that people use this medicine properly. You have to use it exactly the way it's meant to be used. It's not about uh, playing around with it, using the medicine with, with bad intentions or badly done. He used uh, words in Portugal which are hard to translate, being stupid, doing something in a bad way. We've made this book because we have our culture. We want to leave a record of our culture here in this book. We're not copying. We're registering, we're recording our culture. 
we come, the Neuroqueen people from the jungle with a message from Brazil. And we want to greet you. We want to give you a very affectionate greeting. It's our pleasure to do this to the people who organize this event, to this initiative. It's a real pleasure for us to come from the rainforest to greet you. And not just at the organizers, but to everyone who's here, to all the people that are interested in, in Nixipa and the Kawa, that we're all together here. We're all related. We're all neighbors. It, it doesn't matter if we come from the Amazon or if it's connected with us. It's connected with the spirit, with the earth, with everyone on the planet. It's not just about the indigenous peoples from the Amazon. It's not just about us. This is about all people, but it must be used with a lot of care, with a lot of affection, with a lot of love. We're, we're very happy to be here, to be here in Ibiza. It's the first time I've been here to Ibiza. We've come here to greet you, to speak about our knowledge, our spiritual knowledge, and Ixipa, Omnipa, it has lots of names. There's lots of plants, there's lots of medicine, but actually it's just one God, and it's just one government. And we're all together here, and I thank you very much. Now he's going to sing to harmonize. So I leave you with a message from the, from the rainforest that you have to go to our villages.
aqui, quem quiser mais tem que ir para a nossa comunidade, para a nossa aldeia. Então, eu só lhes deixo aqui a mensagem da floresta, que quem quer mais tem que ir a nossas aldeias. <risos> So thank you very much to all our, these great masters who've been who come here to be with us, and they've really respected the the timing. And it's not because I haven't got things to say. There's an excess here of wisdom. So whoever would like to ask questions, I'd ask you to write it down on a piece of paper, and it will get passed up here. We'll finish the session at five o'clock on the dot. So I'd like to remind you that at half past five. The journalists, the bloggers, the hackers, those who are interested can meet the, our shaman friends, the masters, in, in the central hall at 530 um, obviously, at 5.30, there's going to be a gathering for journalists, bloggers, hackers, and other interested people to speak with the uh, to speak with our masters here in the main hall at 5.30. So we're having questions coming in. Um, So the question is, if the arrival in Santa Dalme uh, of the original indigenous peoples, if it helped to salvage the traditional old ayahuascan traditions, or is it more uh, an imperialist evangelization? I think it's the other way around. It's not Santa Daimi who's arrived to our villages. We have brought our Nishipa outside of the villages the, to the urban communities so that they can see ayahuasca and so that everyone can see and have contact with ayahuasca. This is a question for uh, Taita Juan. What aspects could be improved or could improve the relations of power, magic relations, these magic aspects of the shamans for the defense of the rights of the territory? How can the spiritual effect be integrated with the more, more concrete uh, effect, the more concrete aspect of the defense of land rights? Now in our country, in our land, the government has recognized that um, they've treated the indigenous communities badly. And through sentences given by the constitutional court, the court of the government, that we must take care of our indigenous communities. In Colombia, there were 104 indigenous communities and from those 104 there are 34 communities that are in danger of extinction and from these 34 is our community, the Kamcha community. 
And now we have the task of finding out how we can uh, claim our rights in terms of land, health, justice, and in all senses. Now we're working for this, to, to be able to have freedom, the freedom to organize our own government. Uh, I, I hope that we can support one another together as since since the medicine is medicine is the same as illness illness is not just for the indigenous people it's for everyone we must all care for each other as children of one mother earth For Kahawali, there are two questions which are quite similar. Speaking about what is the, your opinion about the use of ayahuasca by non-indigenous peoples? And another question, which is what ethical aspects are involved with a curer who is not indigenous? What measures should be taken um, to respect ayahuasca? This is one of the questions that I think is important for today in this meeting in relation to our ancestral wisdom. In the way that we were educated, in, in the ancestral tradition of ayahuasca, it's totally vital, necessary, essential for the virtue of being able to share a sacred way with all the goodness that this plant has. It corresponds to do this with, in the way that we were educated by our traditional native masters. It is possible. No. There really are a lot of people in, on all continents, Europe, Colombia, North America, Australia, Africa as well, Japan where there are people who are taking the initiative to share this little plant with other people. And really, in a much wider, in a presentation which was um, very extensive, which I had the opportunity to do um, uh, a couple of weeks ago, in in Switzerland on a meeting about this plant where I had three hours to, to answer. I was able to explain the importance of traditions, the, tra the importance of res rescuing these traditions, the importance that these, the importance that traditions are respected, that tra traditions call upon those people like these people here at the panel who have a true knowledge of the wisdom and the way of healing and the way to offer this uh, virtue, this plant. I know that years ago in Basilea the same theme was talked about and it caused a lot of friction between people in the auditorium. But that's the way that we see is the best way. And we have to be sincere about this because that's how you relate to this plant. This is a question for Seattle, but for, or for everyone. If the use of yache, of ayahuasca, is sustainable with this level of international export, Primeiro, 
coisa não quando é o pajé, o xamã, né, para dar continuidade a alguma pessoa. É importante que tenha o conhecimento mínimo e algum certificado no papel, né, que tem uma regra que pode não fazer mal, fazer bem para dar continuidade. Não tem problema, mas tendo um conhecimento profundo, né, que estuda com xamã, com pajé, com seres de aprendizagem, é importante né, para ter essa parceiro como nós, né, como nós aqui temos aberto. Se uma pessoa sabe, né, aprendeu com o professor, aprendeu com o próximo, é importante dar continuidade onde não tem, né, todo dia que a gente tem pajé de lado, né, porque o pajé, mais pajé, mais pajé estão indo, né. Então temos que menos desenhar para... I'd like to ask the, the Spanish who understands Portuguese, who understands Portuguese, who, can you put your hand up if you understand Portuguese? <laughs> you have to improve your levels, because they're, they're very nearby languages. What he's saying is that we have to have minimum knowledge to be inviting the medicine of other peoples. Uh, uh, ba the basic, you need some knowledge, you have to have learned with a teacher. You have to have some kind of school, of tradition, of, of a line, because unfortunately we don't always have um, the pages, which is a Portuguese word, which, which means shaman or healer. A lot of them are dying, and we're not always going to have one to hand. So, there may not be a paja, but the person who is there must have the wisdom. Regarding the exporting of daime and vege ayahuasca, I, he thinks it's good. He sees it with good eyes. He thinks that helps the people to keep respecting this path of this medicine. And it's true that it seems like we're, we're facing um, an excess of congestion, an excess. Th things are um, troubled because there are people who are, are a bit complicated, people who are a bit difficult, but he believes that this expansion is good and it's necessary to carry on with wisdom, with knowledge, because that can help a lot of people to cure themselves also. Ayahuasca 
no caminho xamanismo se expandiu bastante para a Europa geral e também no, na Amazônia, no Brasil. E hoje eu vejo que tem muito xamanismo é, dizendo que é xamã. É, e a minha pergunta, é, talvez não uma pergunta, mas eu fico aqui pensando, fazendo uma pergunta para mim mesmo. É, qual, porque é, há 20 anos atrás, é, o uso ritual de tradicionais, os povos indígenas, os povos originários, é, não só da Amazônia, mas como eu acredito eu, e também no em todos os nativos que ayahuasqueiros, curaneiros, que consagra, que são, tem uma, uma tradição, tem uma cultura. E do 20 anos para cá, eu vejo indígena e não indígena fazendo uso por o mundo afora, porque acho, me parece que o mundo hoje é, virou um negócio de, de xamanismo. Eu é, pergunto, é, a vocês que estão aqui nessa uh, conferência discutindo várias coisas importantes sobre isso, que nós, povos indígenas, não temos uh, esse direito como instituição uh, de, tra uh, de transportar de, de uso ritual como religião. Né? E eu queria, assim, deixar aqui uma mensagem importante que, uh, que também os povos a, meu, a minha comunidade deixou o um recado para trazer, eu não esperei que eu ia sentar na mesa para falar isso, mas deixo aqui um recado, né? que também é, nós somos barrados muitas vezes para o nosso governo brasileiro para transportar o nosso unique, a ayahuasca unique, e muito, muitos povos indígenas brasileiros, o acriano, que são um indígena acriano que vivemos na fronteira com o Peru Brasil, aonde eu nasci. É... Qual é a discussão hoje para o nosso, para a gente ter não ter barreira entre o nosso próprio governo brasileiro? Imagina a gente transportar a ayahuasca para trazer para a Europa em qualquer lugar do mundo, né? É, nós também não queremos ter essa barreira porque a ayahuasca não existe barreira, não existe fronteira. Eu acho que é, eu vi a, a, o meu pai falando aqui, muitos representantes aqui estão presentes aqui, mas eu queria deixar aqui muito cuidado com, é, com quem diz que são xamã, porque os verdadeiros xamã não fala que são xamã. He is Leopardo, he's the son of um, Siam. He would like to thank the opportunity to be here. He wasn't expecting to sit at the panel and he's happy about this. He's happy to be sitting here with the others. He's a student of his tradition and he's still learning. He says that today he doesn't understand why shamanism is everywhere. Everyone, I am a shaman. Shamanism is everywhere. It's a surprise that there's so much shamanism everywhere. And he asks himself this question. Why, in the last 20 years, is there so much use of this me traditional medicine? Not just in indigenous peoples, but non-indigenous peoples also. So today he's seeing this, this expansion of shamanism, but he feels that the government in Europe often doesn't allow the entry of ayahuasca. What he wanted to say before is that the Brazilian government 
also cause troubles to the indigenous peoples and often take away their khuni and they're traveling on the plane and they take away their drinks he doesn't understand why this is happening so he's making an appeal to the Brazilian government he also says that he comes from the same community the Anagre in the border of Brazil and Peru and what he says is that people should remember that many people say that they are shaman, but the real shamans don't actually say, I am a shaman. So we're coming to the end now, there's lots of questions left. And uh, this one's for Leopardo, the son of Sia. And because he's the youngest at the table, there were two questions about the leans. Uh, so I'd like to pass this question on to Leopardo, who can answer this question. There were two questions about the age when a child can start taking ayahuasca. And how can ayahuasca, how can ayahuasca be used and at what age uh, to, to improve the conscience, the awareness of people, of children? Uh, we, the indigenous people, believe that this medicine is quite strong. It can be something which is quite intense. So, in relation to children, 
we only start from a minimum of seven or eight years old. In my case, this depends a lot on the family of every all the parents. In my case, I remember at 12 years old, I had my first experience with um, Mixipa. And I realized that, in fact, it's a very serious thing and, uh, because, uh, because uh, I came, it came before me, the serpent, the snake, or the jiboy, as we say in Portuguese, which is, jibu, which is our spiritual master, which is connected with our tradition of the Uniquin people. And it was quite... Um, it left quite an impression on me. And I had come from a family with a lot of uh, pages or, or healers. And this is part of our way. And it's also part of our way to understand from when we were children the tobacco, which is the rapé, which is what um, they, were, they were speaking about before. Rapé is part of our traditional use of our medicines uh, and he uses some words in Neoquin that speak of the um, delights of nature that's part of our medicine right I think we have to close now there's lots of questions left but there are various questions related with tourism what's the right way of doing this so I'm going to ask the most difficult question is it true that there are shamans who use ayahuasca to acquire power? Why doesn't ayahuasca indicate the true path to us? Well, we have to be very careful in this aspect because with, with power you can, make, uh, you can do a lot of damage. When a friend from our country says that the police is, when our friend says that in our country the police are taking away the ayahuasca, well, one day in our, my country that also happened. It happened to me. The police took it away from me and I explained a lot the importance and the power that the medicine has but he didn't care and so suddenly uh, I had this illumination enlightenment and I said go on then take it okay we'll take it but I'm not uh, responsible for what happens if you take it your chichi will, uh, will, will go bad so he didn't take it and there's many occasions when in a moment you can suddenly become enlightened uh, not, it's not just about the power of the mind, it's a spiritual power. It's the power of the body and how to cure. There are times that suddenly it's very strong and it can harm us. And we're, if, if we're healers, we, we can't cause damage to any other people. We are, the, the remedy always gives a tool, which is humility. And it's that humility that we must share. That's what we must share. It's a, it's a reoccurring question in, this, in these times. It's a wise plant. It's got its own awareness. And it's an awareness is an mature or greater than all humans. And when someone be begins to walk on an unethical path, as we say in Colombia, it, it goldens the pill. It allows you to go a bit more wrong to arrive at the point in his life 
to, to go back to a situation. It's like when you throw a boomerang and it comes back much stronger. <laughs> and maybe you can't catch it. And maybe when you get hit, it's going to hurt. But it won't be today or tomorrow. Ayahuasca knows when to return the boomerang. There is just one path. There aren't lots of paths. There's just one path which is important to follow. It's important to follow a doctrine of knowledge, of traditional knowledge, a shared knowledge, a collective knowledge. If you don't follow this path, you can't transform into anything. The divine force exists. If we don't follow this path, it can bring lots of confusion. You have to follow this path of knowledge, of diet, of respect, the rules of tradition. When I was young, I also wanted to see everything and get involved in everything, but I didn't see anything. I didn't learn a lot. After only with time did I start to learn. Because this medicine requires at least a training of at least 12 years to start to learn something. Ayahuasca, medicina, é para todos, mas nem para todo mundo. 
também, porque existe muitos, para a gente, assim, que são os povos indígenas que vivemos na, lá na floresta, com a natureza, já temos essa relação, mas para para centro urbano, né, que, que é muita, muita gente é, não dá conta também do tamanho que é tão forte que às vezes há muitos casos que vem revelando dentro do caminho, né, há muitos casos históricos no Brasil, fora do Brasil, é, mas eu acredito eu que quando a gente está falando nesse sentido que nem todo mundo é, pra, na, nasceu para seguir, porque quando se tem uma tradição, quando se tem uma, uma cultura, é, os abuelos, né, que principalmente eu vivi bastante com meu avô, que transmitiu a história no dia a dia do, dos parentes que não estão mais presentes, que são meu ancestral, o Nicuim, que já está em outra, outra dimensão cósmica, que são cosmologia, no sentido que estamos sempre presente protegendo esse caminho da, da, da espiritualidade. Quando eu digo, quando essa pergunta vem, por que o próprio é, ser a planta é maestro, se não ensina o caminho certo? Não é porque caminho certo, as pessoas que não, talvez não compreendam, não, não entendem, é, a forma de trabalhar com a medicina. Pelo menos quando a gente, nós que somos da floresta, tem, um, uma, tem que passar por uma, uma escala de, de escada para ter alguma coisa, para ter uma, uma formação né, de, um, de um pajé, nós, o pajé tem que ter um conhecimento, uma formação, a mesma coisa que vocês têm faculdade, têm universidade, nós, povos indígenas, também temos uma faculdade de, de poder passar algum tempo na floresta conhecendo a natureza, conhecendo a floresta, conhecendo o sentido dos animais, conhecendo o sentido dos espíritos, das plantas medicinais, que essa planta de poder né, é muito forte. Né? Não é somente ir lá, preparar e tomar e achar que isso é... é é isso, mas que tem outro, para a gente, tem um outro sentido de trabalhar com a medicina. Mas acredito que a própria medicina vai trabalhar nisso, e, e para isso não é um dia para o outro que vai te ensinar caminho. Ah, agora você tomar ayahuasca, você pode ser uma líder condutor de cerimônias. Demora um tempo para você adquirir ou, ou seguir o caminho certo, correto, né? É. The plant is the master. The use of ayahuasca is for everyone. Well, maybe not for everyone, everyone. It's for everyone, but not for some. The thing is, in the urban centers, there are lots of challenges, lots of difficulties. It's very different for us in the, the indigenous peoples living in the jungle near the nature. Ayahuasca is very strong. It could be a, a quite a strong experience. And we have seen, we're witness to cases in which problems have arisen. So maybe not everyone has been born to follow this path. Because this path is connected with a tradition, a culture, uh, and a, an apprenticeship. For example, I learned a lot from my grandfather about my family, about my ancestors, about the Uniquin people, about the people who were there and continue in the spiritual world and are caring for us, are watching over us, are protecting us, who, as we're following this path of ayahuasca, of spirituality. So if the plant is a master and it shows us, why are there these problems? Because sometimes, why do these things sometimes happen? I say that, in fact, the plant speaks properly, but people don't understand it. They don't understand it in the proper way, how to work with 
with the medicine. I don't understand how to listen to what the medicine is telling us. So we must learn. In order to learn how to understand this, there's a process, a training. You don't go to school. You don't go to university. We have our own schools and universities of the jungle. It's the university of getting into the jungle. To, to start to learn knowledge about the plants, about the animals, about the spirits. This is our university. Because it's not just about taking ayahuasca and that's it. It's about understanding the meaning, the sense of this experience. And to understand that, it's not, you don't do it from one day to the next. It takes a long time and you have to carry on working at it. So now the time is up, it's half past five on the dot. So I'd just like to thank everyone, the, the great masters here who have spoken to us with their words of wisdom. And I'd also like to thank the organizers who have made this possible so that we're all here. I'd, I'd like to thank the organizers.